All right, so welcome back to our lecture series on core divergence and, and grad. So in the previous part, we've looked at what core is. We looked at the formulas and I've explained what, how to go about it. So now we want to look at an example to use to illustrate those um, formulas I shared earlier. So here it says if A is equals to what you have on the screen, which is the function that y raised to the power 4 minus x square z square, the coordinate is i, and then x square plus y square j, and then x square y z k. So they said determine called A at point 1, 3, and minus 1. So now let's do this. So solution. So before we get into the solution, if you watch the previous part of this video, I need to just make something clear here. Now you see this formula you are having on the screen here. Now for this particular for this particular part of this formula, so you might come across some material or some textbook. They will have theirs as plus j. Then into brackets, you are going to be having a partial differential of ax over partial differential of z minus partial differential of az over partial differential of x. And then you might, just in case it's confusing that like what's happening. So what they did is, you see what they have here? If you open these brackets, if you expand these brackets, you are going to get this. Exactly. So don't let that to confuse you. Exactly. So once you open up these brackets, you are still going to be getting this. Exactly. So now let's go back to the example. So, so since we are dealing with call, so let's write the notation. So that's call, the cross product of A. So that will be equals to, so let's draw a matrix. So this is going to be I, J, and then K. And then here we are going to be having partial differential over that of x, then partial differential over that of y, and partial differential over that of z. So on the third row, like I said, that's where you are going to be having the functions. So this will be y raised to the power 4 minus x square z square. And then um, for the third row, second column, we are going to be having x square plus y square so for the third row third column you are going to be having this so make sure you write it with the negative sign that's going to be with this negative sign so make sure you include it so that will be minus x square y z all right so those are the information that we need for now you are still going to come back to this all right so now let's simplify it further so like I said, since we are dealing with cross products, so let's start. So we are going to be having the i. Now this multiply by this. So that will be partial differential over partial differential of y multiply by minus x square yz minus so this and this. So that will be partial differential over partial differential of z into brackets x square plus y square then minus j so this j here so minus j let me open in square brackets so now that we are dealing with minus j so this and this will multiply we we'll multiply it together and subtract it from the product of this and this. So let me write that out. So we are having the partial differential over partial differential of of x multiplied by minus x square y z minus so this and this. So let me just write it. Let me continue here. So about partial differential of z. Okay, b over the z. Multiply by. 
y raised to the power 4 minus x square z square. So for the last one, it's going to be plus k. So, so what we are just doing here, just uh, don't let the big numbers to, um, to disturb you or to worry you or to discourage you. Exactly. So once we simplify it now, you are going to see that the numbers are going to shrink real time. Alright, so since we are dealing with k, which is a um, with k, so we are left with what we are going to be multiplying is this multiplied by this. We are still going to subtract it from product of this and this. So, which is more like this and this. Alright, so let's do that. For k, now I said that will be d over dx. I mean, partial differential of d over dx. That will be multiplying x squared plus y squared then minus this now partial differential of partial differential of y and then multiply by y raised to power 4 minus s cube is it s cube that will be x x square z square all right so that's it on that stage. So now let's now simplify it. So that means our i. All right. So now let's. <coughs> so now let's start uh, looking at partial differential of each of them. So we've already taken our i. So what we want to do is we want to simplify this now. So partial differential of over partial differential of y of this. Since we are dealing with y. So that means we are going to differentiate y and every other thing will be a constant. So if you should do that here, we'll be left with minus x squared z and then on this part here, if you should differentiate, look for partial differential of this with respect to z. For this is going to give us a zero because you can see it is with respect to z and right here we don't have any, any z here. So that is the end for this. So you can see like I said, all what we are having here, if you should simplify it, we are having just, just this, exactly. So then let's go to the next one, uh, minus j. So let's just open a bracket. So for this now, we are going to differentiate this. I uh, look for the partial differential with respect to x. So if you should do that, this is the only one x you are having here, minus x squared. So if you differentiate it, it's going to give us minus 2x. So minus 2x and then this other y and z will remain, we'll take them as a constant. So we'll be having minus 2xyz. Exactly. So let's go to this part. So we are differentiate, looking for partial differentiation with respect to z. And this is the only z we have here, that's z square. So if you should differentiate z square, that's going to give us 2z. Now, so 2z and then we are going to write out all of this. except the y because you can see there is a negative sign here which is separating it from this y raised to power 4 and for this y raised to power 4 there is no z attached to it so what we are going to be having so there will be minus so remember that we already have a minus sign here which is this minus sign so if you should differentiate this is also going to give us like i said if you differentiate z squared that will give us um, 2z yeah, 2z, and then if you should, this would be a constant. So we are going to be having, and remember that there's a negative sign here also. So that will be minus 2x squared z. Are we good? All right. So we are having negative here and the negative here. So we can go ahead as um, that's positive. So let's just make it positive. So this will be positive. Are we good? So that is for j. So now let's do for k, then plus k. So let me open my square bracket. So here, this is for k. If you are to look for the partial differentiation of this uh, with respect to x, so you can see this is just x here. And if you are to uh, look for the partial differentiation of that, or to just differentiate it, that will just be 2x. So we are going to be having 2x. So we can't do anything to this y square because there is a plus sign here. So they are not all together as a as a product. Alright, so this is just a zero. Now let's go to the next one. So minus 
because of this minus sign here. So now let's do for y. So we are having y here. So if we have to differentiate this y raised to the power 4, that would give us 4y cubed. So that would be minus 4y cubed. So we can't do anything here. We can't differentiate anything here because there is no y here. So all what we are having at the previous line, it has been simplified into this. Now let's see. Now if we go back to the question, we are giving points. So let's now go back to the question. So he said at point um, 1, 3, and minus 2. So let me just first of all write it. So we are giving that at point P. Okay. Okay, they didn't mention P. They just said at point 1, 3, and minus 2. So that means our X is equals to 1. Our Y is equals to 3. And our Z is equals to minus 2. So... What if they didn't give us at any point exactly? So if they didn't give us this x is uh, this particular point where we can conclude our x is one, our y is three, and z is minus two, so we can just stop here as uh, our answer exactly. Except if you want to do any further simplification, but you can just stop here as your answer. But now that we are given points, so we we'll go ahead and substitute those um, those values for x, y, and z. So we are going to be having nebula cross product of a so now to give us now let's let's do this together for i so minus x square and z so what is our x so that means we are having x square is that's one square so that will be minus one times what is our z is minus two so that's minus one times minus two so that will give us two so let's go to j so that will be minus j in brackets so for j we are having minus 2 times our x is 1 then times y and z then y is 3 times 3 and z is minus 2 so we are having minus 2 times 1 our y is 3 minus 2 times 1 times 3 and then times minus 2 so this will give us uh, minus 6 and then 12 exactly so that will be 12 plus so let's see, put the plus so let's come over here so we are having two and then our x is one so x square is one square that will be times one and then our z is minus two times minus two so if you should do the that's two times one times minus two that will give us minus four so that's for j so let's head over to k so two times x which is two times one so that will be two times one is two minus so 4y cubed that's 4 times what's our y our y is 3 so that'll be 3 raised to power 3 so that's 3 raised to power 3 is that's 3 times 3 times 3 and that's 27 so so 27 times 4 and that will give us 108 so that will be 2 minus 108. Are we good? Alright, so now let's proceed. So we'll be having uh, our nabla cross product of A as... So this will be 2i. Then minus j. So let me close this. This um, is same as having 12 minus 4. Which is 8. Plus k. And then 2 minus 108, that's um, minus 106. So now we can just go ahead and put in our final answer. That will be cross product of A. Again, let me just mention it. What we are having here is not the same thing as having something like this. Exactly. They are different. Especially when we are dealing with something like this. They are different. So, and don't just write it like this without putting the... Uh, cross products exactly so if you write any of these three they are different entirely exactly so you have to take note of that so you might think that they are mathematically similar but when you are dealing with core divergence and gradient you know they are different all right so our final answer will be looking like 2i minus 8j minus 106k and 
that is the solution to this um, example. So I hope you got the concept right. And if you did not, you can just try to go through it again. Take your time to go through it. You watch the first part. This is the example one. And then you go through it again and again. I believe that will be clear. So if you find value in it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any question or doubts, just leave them in the comment section below. So we are going to be looking at another example, which is example two. And that will be in the next uh, video.